Well, warm well, welcome to this talk. Now, yesterday we looked at the continuing problem of increased deaths, excess mortality, internationally, all around the world. And today we're going to look at some specific data from England, from the Office for uh, Health Improvements and Disparities. And we're going to look at the ages of death, and we'll see that people are dying in higher numbers in all age groups. It's not just affecting the elderly, it's affecting young people as well. And we'll look specifically at some of the causes of death. And then if you stick around, we'll do a little bit of uh, pathology and uh, explain what is going on in at least one of these causes. So let's start off by looking at um, the overall excess mortality here. So this is their latest data. So anything above the line is in excess. And we see that throughout 2022, as we know, there's been a, an excess mortality, only below average on a couple of uh, occasions. When we break this down into age groups, these are persons 0 to 24. Now, it's a pity they don't break it down more than this. We don't have data where we don't have data. This is just 0 to 24. It will be very interesting to see the differences in children, but this is what we have. But tragically, in this younger age group, we do see uh, an increase in deaths throughout 2022 again. Um, the times where there's an excess of deaths are much more frequent than the times where there's less than average deaths. 0 to 24. Uh, 25 to 49 year old age range, probably even more profound difference there. Excess deaths again throughout 20, uh, 2022. And 25 to 49, people in midlife, we don't really expect them to be dying in excess numbers. This is there's something that just isn't right not right at all moving on to the 50 to 64 again again we see people thank, thankfully these days fewer people die at this age and yet we see all the way through uh, uh, an excess in deaths in this age group the 50 to 64 year old uh, age group 65 to 74 we see in excess as well and in older people 75 to 84 we see in excess and uh, I mean I, I know that this age group's more likely to die anyway but this is in excess of the normal and that is the 85 plus so more older people are dying than we would expect so we see it's affecting all age range now this is partic particularly interesting it, it's um it's the causes of death now the first one is cardiovascular disease all forms of cardiovascular disease. And we see, okay, this was high during some of the pandemic waves, as we would expect. But we see that more people are dying from cardiovascular disease in 2021 and throughout 2022 than we would expect. Ongoing excess deaths from cardiovascular disease, the heart and the circulatory system. This one is ischemic heart disease. Ischemic heart disease is lack of blood supply through the coronary arteries, meaning the heart muscle, the myocardium is not getting enough blood supply. So we seem to be seeing an acceleration of coronary arterial disease as expressed in excess mortality from ischemic heart disease. Now, this one here, um, this is um, excess, um, this is cerebrovascular disease. So cerebrovascular is... Um, well, cerebrum is the brain, isn't it? So the blood supply to the brain, strokes and things like that. And again, um, we see that there's more disease here. This, is, this indicates to me that there's more disease of um, blood vessels, the blood vessels supplying the brain with blood. Now, this one is particularly interesting, heart failure. Well, particularly uh, disconcerting. Deaths from heart failure are greatly increased. And, and in, in a minute, I'm going to tell you a bit more about what this means with heart failure. But we see throughout 2022, 2021, in the pandemic, we would expect it to some extent. Yes, exacerbation of existing heart failure. But we wouldn't expect it in 2021 and 2022 unless there was additional cause or causes. I'm going to come back to heart failure in a minute. But just before then... Um, Slightly reassuring, uh, cancer deaths aren't as much up as much as we'd feared. So we see some below average, some above average. Yes, slight increase overall, but we had feared a huge increase in cancer deaths after the pandemic. And thankfully, at the moment, we are not seeing that. So remarkably good news. 
But where you'd expect to see uh, a lot more deaths, uh, lung disease, chronic respiratory disease, well, we're not slightly less deaths than normal. Some increase in 2022, but not, not a profound uh, increase where we would expect to see it, but we're not seeing it. This indicates to me that these causes of excess deaths, see, if it was COVID causing the excess deaths, we'd expect that to exacerbate lung diseases. <clears throat> and we're not seeing increase in deaths from lung diseases. So are we needing to look somewhere else other than COVID? Of course, is the question. Uh, this is um, other respiratory diseases. And again, we see far fewer deaths than we would expect from other respiratory diseases. So again, <coughs> if we were seeing lots of COVID, <coughs> lots of COVID deaths would be, or COVID sequelae deaths from lung disease, we would expect this to be higher, but it's not, it's lower. People are not dying of these other lung diseases anything like as much as they normally do. So COVID lung infection, as an explanation here, basically is not holding water. And we know this from other data that a lot of these excess deaths are not COVID deaths. Dementia, um, slightly less than normal, which is good news. Um, less people dying of Alzheimer's and dementia. And uh, this is liver disease. Now, quite a big increase in liver disease. What could be affecting the liver? What could be going to the liver to cause uh, liver um, more deaths from liver disease? Cirrhosis is fibrosis of the liver tissue. Big increase there. Now, all these things mean something. Um, that's Parkinson's disease, which we see is not increased. Again, we had feared Parkinson's disease might increase, but it hasn't. So... There we go, cardiovascular disease and liver disease. What's the common factor in these? What could be going to both of these uh, organs? Now, we saw a big increase in heart failure. So let me just look and show you, if I see if I can find the graph on uh, heart failure. Here we have the graph on heart failure, big increase in heart failure. So what is happening here? Now, I'm going to show you a couple of diagrams from my um, pathophysiology book, and I'm going to put the link to this whole book. You can download it free if you want to. So what we have here is we have a diagram of the circulatory system. Now, you might be somewhat familiar with this. So the oxygenated blood is coming out from the left side of the heart here, the left ventricle, going around the body, uh, becoming progressively deoxygenated as it goes around the body, going back in these large veins here, back to the right side of the heart, going through to the lungs, beautiful simple circulatory system deoxygenated blood arriving at the lungs getting oxygenated and going back to the left side of the heart there it, it, it always amazes me although the circulatory system is in some ways so so complicated in essence it is so so simple really quite quite a beautiful uh, beautiful system so that's kind of the normal situation now Heart failure can be, there's two causes really. It can be disease of the heart valves here. That's uh, one of the main causes of heart failure. Or it can be disease of the heart muscle, the myocardium. And this is the myocardium here. This pumping part of the heart, the myocardial heart muscle. So that's all, uh, that's all the myocardium. As I say, do download these pictures for yourself. So what is that uh, now? We, I don't think that the excess in um, heart failure deaths are caused by valvular failure because doctors can diagnose this very easily because when you listen, you hear whooshes and murmurs and all sorts of noises. I think this excess of deaths is caused by disease of the myocardium. Myocardial failure, I think, is the cause of the excess deaths through cardiovascular disease. So that's what I think is happening. So what all our clever doctors and pathologists need to do is sit around and say, well, what could be damaging? What could possibly be damaging the myocardium, the heart muscle, potentially in tens of thousands of thousands of people across the United Kingdom and potentially in millions of people around the world? What could this possibly be? Now, if the heart muscle isn't pumping out blood properly, heart failure, you would normally define it as the cardiac output, the amount of blood pumped out by the heart, is insufficient to meet the metabolic demands of the body. Um, so the body doesn't get enough oxygen and enough nutrients. But as well as that, as the blood's not going through the heart, because the blood's not going through the heart, it dams back. 
It's a bit like if you've got a traffic jam on a bridge or a road or something, you're going to get a backlog of traffic because you haven't got the throughput of traffic in a narrowed area. So that's what happens in, in heart failure. This is why people with heart failure often become swollen and edematous, uh, depending on the, the form. But I'm just going to show you a couple of diagrams here because they're, they're remarkably interesting. So this is uh, th th this sort of heart failure here. This sort of heart failure here would, would occur when there's a disease of the, uh, the left side of the heart. This is the left side of the heart here. Because um, remember, in anatomy, you're always looking at someone else's. So that's the left side of the heart there. So if the blood's not getting through, if the blood's not getting through these chambers here, um, if the blood's not getting pumped out here, then there's going to be a backlog of blood in the lower chambers, the ventricles. Then there's going to be a backlog of blood there. That increases the pressure. That gives back pressure all the way to the lungs. And you're going to get fluid accumulating in the lungs. This is called pulmonary edema. This is why these patients often find it very difficult to breathe when lying down. That's called orthopnea. And there can also be right-sided heart failure as well. So here we see someone with right-sided heart failure. This right side is not pumping properly. Therefore, the blood is not getting, the blood that's trying to get back in here has got a backlog because that's, that's not being pumped out properly. So you're getting a backlog of blood there, so you get an increase in pressure there, and you're going to get a backlog of blood in the circulation. And that can lead to accumulation of fluids in the liver, the spleen, the intestine, the kidneys. And of course, these patients can get swollen feet because these come from the, uh, these come from the legs, and very often these patients can get puffy, uh, puffy ankles as well because of the, the backlog of blood so i'm afraid that's what we're seeing um a lot more of um if you want some more details on that i'll, I'll um i'll uh, as i say you can download the, the text and read it all for yourself so what we need to work out is what is causing this damage of the myocardium that's causing right ventricular failure and left ventricular failure and then when we know what's causing it, we can take away the cause and hopefully that will reduce the, the, uh, the prevalence of the disease. What we don't know is if some factor has caused damage that's potentially leading to these ongoing deaths. There's unknowns here. But we need a free and open debate to decide what that is. Because at the moment, more people are dying of heart failure and these other diseases, circulatory failure and liver disease. And we need to work out what is doing that. So uh, there's actually a heck of a lot to go on, and it's a bit disappointing that more is not being uh, not being done. And it's a bit disappointing that media is not following this up. But that's where we're at at the moment. We are we do know the cause of some of these excess deaths. Let's take that forward as a matter of urgency. Thank you for watching.